Hi, I'm Tom. Welcome back to the Woodshop Nerdery. Today, I'm really excited to share with you the results of a project build that has been a dream of mine for almost 18 years. Back in 2003, we were celebrating the 100th anniversary of Powered Flight. And if you remember back then, there were all sorts of documentaries and programs on television celebrating the Wright Brothers' first flight. Let me show you two clips of a documentary I saw way back then. In 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright made the world's first sustained, controlled, powered flights. Now the key word in there is control. With a simple system of cables, he could draw the corners together, turning one set of wing tips up in the wind, the other set of wing tips down. By doing this, he could roll the aircraft. The shopsmith owners who follow my channel will recognize Nick Engler. Nick has also maintained a website related to the Wright Brothers Aeroplane Company, which further explains the importance of the Wright Brothers 1899 kite. It also gives great detail on how he constructed a kite, and I realized that that project would be perfect for me. However, at the time I was living in a condo, we were just starting a family, I was building a career, and I simply did not have time to do the project. Not until now. So in this video, I'm happy to share with you my attempts to fly the kite that I built based on Nick Angler's plans. In the coming weeks, I'll be releasing additional videos which detail the construction of the kite. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get to the video. Here I am out in the backyard. I've got my anemometer here. We'll get some wind measurements. The Weather Channel page says that it should be uh, between seven and 10 mile per hour winds today. We're looking at about six miles per hour, 59 degrees with 38% relative humidity. I'm not sure if the kite will get off the ground with those conditions, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. Well, it immediately snapped, which I suppose is somewhat predictable because I did notch this spar exactly at that point in order to securely fasten the uh, lashing. It's time to think about a field repair and see if we can make another attempt. I'm sure uh, the Wright brothers experienced quite a few setbacks. <laughs> so I can't sit here and whine about this. Just have to try to figure out a solution, see if I can keep moving forward. So here's my field repair. It's nothing more than a dowel rod lashed to the broken spar. It seems fairly rigid. I did take a risk building this out of poplar. Uh, of course, I'm sure many of you watching are thinking if I had built it out of oak, it'd still be intact. Um, that's a possibility. Okay, let's give it another try.
Here I'm trying to get the kite off the ground. I actually try quite a few times. I wanted to show you all the instances where I tried to fly the kite. One of the reasons for this is to let you know how difficult this actually is. There's a lot of skill and knowledge and just general good luck involved here. In between each attempt, I'm experimenting with different lengths of string, uh, more string in total, and sometimes more string on the bottom, sometimes more string on the top, and just trying to find that magic combination that'll let this kite get airborne. As I watch this footage, I sort of think of the Wright brothers and all the challenges they must have faced and how really what they did couldn't have been done just by anybody. I'm not saying they're the only people who could have made the advancements that they made, but it obviously takes a special sort of person. I also have to say that building the kite itself was not an easy task either. I know it looks just like a bunch of sticks and string and fabric, but this was a really challenging project. There was just a lot of know-how to fasten all these common parts together. And I was working from a project plan developed by Nick Angler. The Wright brothers were working from their imagination. So it's the next day and I'm at a new location. I'm actually at one of the parks here in the local area. And we have a wide open area with a steep hill, but we're only getting about three mile per hour winds, gusting up to eight miles per hour at some times. But the wind is consistent. It's 52 degrees and about 45% relative humidity. Split up, okay, and just sort of toss it towards me. Okay, so we had the second failure here after a marginally successful go. We have a cross bracing string 
that has uh, snapped off. Um, you know, this thing has hit the ground quite a few times. So I'm not disappointed in that at all. I'm not the best pilot, obviously. And it was my first time building something like this. What, you know, what could I really expect? Uh, I did get maybe a second and a half of uh, flight time out of it. And I was able to move it left and right with the controls. Whether that was just the result of me tensioning the strings or uh, the physical manifestation of wing warping, I don't really know. It wasn't in the air long enough, but I'm gonna call this a success. I had just a wonderful time with this build. Again, it was a dream, 18 years in the making, and I wanna thank Nick Angler for his support and the websites he runs, providing all the information I needed to build this kite. Thank you, Nick. I cannot thank Nick Angler enough. I contacted him through his Wright Brothers website, and he was kind enough to email me the color version of these plans, which were instrumental and helping me build the kite. Some of you may be wondering why I've stopped here and I didn't make more effort to get a little better flight. The answer is, I'm not a very good pilot. If you watch the footage again, you'll see in the few times I actually did get a second or two of flight, the kite swooped back and forth like this. That is most likely due to me overcorrecting the controls. It's just like when you're a new driver or you're learning to steer a boat for the first time, you have a tendency to overcorrect and it takes some time to develop the finesse in order to control that vehicle. Flying this kite is no different. So I think I've done just about as good as I can without a lot more time to develop that skill and probably a lot more wind as well. Given the number of times this kite has already crashed into the ground, I don't think that it's feasible for me to get enough flight time to actually make any meaningful improvements. And besides, I'm happy with how it all turned out anyway. I don't think there's anything left to prove. Okay, that's the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. Please check out the build project videos that are coming up in the next few weeks. Thanks, bye.